Good morning, Southern Catholic. We are indeed honored today to be able to come together in celebration of Black History Month. We are indeed honored today to welcome our sisters and brothers from the Perpetual Hope Gospel Choir of Our Lady of Consolation Catholic Church. We are indeed honored today to have with us the pastor, the shepherd, the leader of Our Lady of Consolation, Reverend Dr. Basil Cede, who will open our Black History Month concert with prayer. Can we please rise and talk tonight? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we glorify your name for this wonderful day which you have made us to see and to witness. We thank you for making us part of this great family, the Christian family, in which there is no East, there is no West. Lord God, continue to inspire us to be brothers and sisters to one another. And as we sing today together, bless our church, our Lady of Conservation Catholic Church, bless our institution, the Charlotte Catholic High School, and bless our universal church. So that we shall continue to have every reason to glorify your name. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. For those of you I do not know, my name is Dr. Sigwall. I teach English here. I'm also the student council advisor. I want to publicly thank Mr. Kurt Telford, our principal, and his administrative team for their support. Mr. Telford assembled uh, a number of faculty um, to form a Black History Month committee. And he assembled this team several, several months ago and gave us the specific charge. He said, I want Charlotte Catholic to do a sincere, focused, well-planned Black History Month this February. And we prayed and we believed that we would in fact be able to assemble in this gym, at least half of our student body is with us in this gym. The other half, our freshmen and sophomores are in their classes viewing this live streaming. And so we're very grateful for Mr. Telford and for his administrative team, for their vision, for their support for this month, for this project, and indeed for this celebration today. I want um, to give our formal greeting and welcome. I want to invite Mr. Lawrence Nazarian, our president of our student body. Give Lawrence a Good morning, Cougars. On behalf of the Charles Catholic Student Council, we welcome our neighbors from our Lady of Constellation with Perpetual Hope Gospel Choir. This month is Black History Month, as most of you may know. We have recognized several Black American men and women who have bettered our nation through their hard work, dedication, perseverance, genius, and resilience. We recognize the faith and commitment of members of historically Black churches, the academic excellence of graduates of historically Black colleges and universities, the service and solidarity of the nine historically black Greek letter organizations, the advancements, inventions, and achievements of black scientists, the creative genius of black writers, poets, dancers, and composers, the scientific breakthroughs and discoveries of black engineers, chemists, physicists, and astronauts, 
in the voices and talents of black activities, athletes, celebrities, and political leaders. As we begin this assembly today, let us remember those who have remained steadfast and immovable, those who have paved the way not only for the black community, but for us all, who see the benefits of perseverance and hope when all scenes against you. Finally, that we live our voices as we participate in developing a more perfect union. Let us courageously and prayerfully build a world, a world in which race is both seen and celebrated, a world in which justice and mercy are met, a world in which all God's children live and work in harmony, in solidarity, and create sacred spaces for healing, open dialogue, honest sharing, and holiness. Thank you. So as I announced this morning, uh, we are so grateful to be able to do this. Gospel music is a vibrant, vibrant part of the Christian worship experience. So you are invited, uh, as if the Spirit moves you, please move. Uh, allow yourself to be moved. Of course, we want to be participants. We want to participate respectfully and joyfully, both. Um, so for those of you who are fresh, for, uh, who are juniors and seniors, you remember two years ago we were able to uh, have a similar concert and we invited the members of the Our Lady of Consolation Perpetual Hope Gospel Choir. At that time, however, our poor students began creating a vision, or the Holy Spirit began creating a vision in them, as it were. And in our very own chorus director and teacher, Mr. John Schustock, and so this year, we are very, very, very honored to have both our Charlotte Catholic Choir and the members of Our Lady of Consolation participate in this day together. So without further ado, I want to recognize a few people here with me. Uh, first of all, the Choir from Consolation is under the directorship of Mr. Eric L. Massey, with accompaniment from Ms. Michelle Wiley on the drums. Please give them a round of applause. I also want to recognize the choir president, chairperson of the Perpetual Hope Gospel Choir, Ms. Deborah Bond, as well as the Our of Constellation chairperson of the Black Cultural Commission, who will also serve as a bit of a narrator and educator as the day as the concert progresses, Ms. Tony Tubbs. Again, enjoy the concert. If the spirit moves you, allow yourself to be moved. Prepare not only to be informed, but indeed to be transformed, which is the work of the Holy Spirit among us and within us. Good morning, Charlotte Catholic. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Charlotte Catholic. Good morning. That's what food does sound like. Good morning. <laughs> All right now. Thank you so much for inviting and including us in your celebration again, Angie. I want to, right now, tell you what a treasure you have in this choral director, Mr. Schuster. He's provided these choir members with a wonderful history and experience of black music. And I'm so proud of the way he has pushed them to do this as authentically as they could. In 1938, black nationalist Marcus Messiah Garvey said, a people without the knowledge of their history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. That's so important. And as students, I want you all to think critically about what you hear, read, and see around you as it regards people of color, and particularly Africans and African Americans. 
I want you to think critically because I'm a kid of Catholic school too. I'm very proud of you. And you have the opportunity to not only read something, but dig a little bit more. So for example, those of you mathematicians in here, which I was not going to trust. <laughs> You all know that Pythagoras gave us the Pythagorean theorem, right? I hated the Pythagorean theorem. But Pythagoras lived between 580, 580 to 500 BC. Yes? So we think, when we think of the Triangle. We think of who? Ah, okay. Well, then how is it that in 2630 BC, the Egyptian Imhotep, who did not look like Charles Ness? at all built the first pyramid and no one has been able to replicate it. Think. Think. That does not question or put down the Pythagorean theorem. It just asks you to think about what may have come first and you don't typically get taught that in our schools, yes? Historian and educator Dr. Carter G. Woodson's efforts to promote black history through the founding of Negro History Week in 12, 1926 occurred because he wanted to celebrate Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass's birthday. Later in 1969, the students of Kent State University, the students of Kent State University pushed for it to become a month-long event. But in, at Our Lady of Consolation, Black History is 365 days a year because there's more than you could ever know in life. Finally, spiritually, Black gospel music at its root is a musical response to the worldly trials and spiritual faith and rejuvenation of a people. Much like the blues is born out of heartache, back break, and pain, black gospel music is the great, great, great grandchild of West African songs and rhythms. It's the great, great grandchild of the work songs that help the enslaved Africans move through their back breaking work using a coordinated rhythm to push it through. It's the great grandchild of the spirituals like Wade in the Water and Swing Low Sweet Cherry that sent messages that there's going to be a camp meeting for their plans to escape. And the first cousin to gospel music is the blues. In gospel music, you will usually hear several things. First, you will hear the drum. That drum was torn away from the enslaved people by the enslavers because they were afraid of the messages that they could send to the drums. But the drums, they didn't understand, really was just not about the instrument. It's about what was in your heart. You can't take away what was in your heart. So in gospel music, you can take the drums all you want. I'm going to hear it, right? I'm going to go right there with everything I say. So once the drums were taken away, you had to find another way to bring the drums to you, so you did that with your feet. And if they took away my feet, then I did it with my hands. Music that the children do for the same. You're going to hear the drums. You're going to hear it in their sick of 
temptation is going to hear it in that serious baseline that's going to come in on the period. I want y'all to listen for that, okay? Finally, you're going to hear call and response. Because that's about that communication. That's how we talk to each other. When Father said it, that's his homily. If he's cooking, somebody in the congregation can say, Amen, Pastor. Somebody will say, Preach, Pastor. Now, you're also going to hear it clearly in several of the songs that we sing. You're going to hear that call and response, and you're going to hear it in mass. Finally, you're going to hear improvisation. Black people have always had to improvise. Because we never knew what was going to be like one day to the other. So you have to be ready to make something out of nothing. To make something better than what was given to you. That's called improvisation. improvisation. It's adding a little juice and flavor to the pot and to the music. Improvisation, you see, is our secret sauce. Enjoy.
With what we have come to know in our culture as the Black National Anthem. This music was composed by John Rosalind Johnson, and the lyrics are by his brother, James Weldon Johnson. They were much more than composers and musicians, they were activists. They wrote this song in 1900. At a time when our community, all of our community, was fraught with the evil of Jim Crow. And at the time of the Jim Crow era, between 1890 and 1950, the lynchings of more than 4,000 Black people were recorded. Thousands more were never, never recorded. This song was composed in that spirit. And so, in commemoration, when we sing this song in our tradition, we stand. We stand. We stand. Thank you. 
you're trying to clap again, so go on and do it. <laughs> Um, what a great day. Did you enjoy that? Yeah. You know, we have a tradition um, in many, as some of you know, I grew up in the Black Catholic Church. Um, and for those of you who don't know, you know now. Um, and we have a tradition, someone will say God is good. And all the time. God is good. Okay, now I want you to try it. God is good all the time. And all of the time. God is good. God is a good God. You know, we are coming out of this pandemic. We pray and we hope. Um, and so many of us have lost so much during these past two years. Um, some of us have lost so much in a very personal way. In a very personal way. Um, for so many of us, our attendance at church has been hindered. Uh, for so many of us, we've lost friends, we've lost relatives, we've lost time sharing with the people we love. And so let's give another round of applause to Almighty God, who has allowed us to come through. He has kept us, He has protected us, He has brought us through, He has brought us here together. One body in Christ forever. Um, I want to especially, again, thank um, Mr. Telford and his administrative team for supporting this so much and for all the teachers for cooperating and for being flexible. I want to thank uh, Mr. John Shustock, Mr. Monty Bennett, Mr. Monty Bennett on piano, and Mr. Jacob Bolton on drums. Soloists and all the choir members, but before we uh, dismiss, I'd like all the soloists from both choirs to please come forward for another round of applause. <laughs> to your purpose. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the gift of music, 
for the gift of generous hearts. And Almighty God, in a very special way, this month and every month, this day and on every day, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the achievements of all of your children, in particular for the achievements of black musicians, black theologians, black saints, black men and women who have journeyed an often dark and painful, painful road. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the resilience, for the genius, for the perseverance, and for the indomitable spirit of the black community. We give you thanks, O oh God, for indeed, if the only prayer we said was thank you, that would be enough. God is good, all the time. and all the time, God is good. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And I'll turn it over to Mr. Conrad for dismissal. All right, guys, we're going to dismiss anybody with, uh, with the first lunch. Seniors out that door. This side out that door.